This is Salamancer. You are watching Sal TV, competitive Team Fortress 2, and aside from uh, staring at Dave AC here, whispering sweet nothings to his rocket launcher, we are about to watch a Team Fortress 2 game, an epic one, between Mihai's Flow in the blue and Leviathan Gaming in the red. Leviathan Gaming uh, only recently obtained that sponsor, and uh, Leviathan, they, I mean, they used to sponsor some other teams in, like, I Am Intermediate, and this is, I think their second? Maybe their second invite sponsorship, but it's definitely their first sponsorship of a team that's gone to land. You've never seen LG at a land before, to my knowledge. So, uh, but the, the actual LG team right now is basically the team that's been together forever, except Dave, I think, is a recent addition because Mackie left as their roaming soldier. Unless, it does look like right now, Pure and his flow team here on CP Process getting out behind the point. A good killer by Wonderwall on Dave AC, so one roamer kill on the other. And that is going to force the Leviathan Gaming team back to their second point on a CP process. Uh, this was the third map in the series, so I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it for you. You probably need to go watch the Sea Bear cast, because it's going to be better anyway, because Sea Bear's a better caster than I am. If you, <laughs> if you think differently, then you're just wrong. Sadly, he does not have like a, a daily YouTube content channel, because that would be just amazing. But uh, Flo, actually, Harvey's on the spy right now. That's cute. See what he's doing here. Both teams do have 100% Uber, so it's a little bit weird to see a spy play going into like a second point. Um, but they don't notice he's here, so I, this I mean, this could work. Just you don't normally see a roaming soldier this early on in the game doing this. Anyway, it's the third map in the series between these guys. This was the first. Oh, he could get spotted here. Um, this was the first match. The these three maps. The first match played in the morning on um on the land. And so these guys were all playing with LAN ping, which is basically zero, maybe like five milliseconds to the to whatever servers. And it's going to be pretty awesome to watch how they handle it. Right now, uh, Leviathan, I wonder if they're realizing yet that there is going to be... Oh yeah, they definitely noticed a spy back over there. So they just got the kill there. That was Clockwork diving in to take down the hard blue on the spy. And really, there's not a lot of spy can do against the scout who's found him out. So he gets taken out. And that's going to force Leviathan Gaming, not force them, but really give them an opportunity to push in. And of course, you know they're going to want to. Uh, we'll see what the jumps look like here in just a second, as there is a lot of spam coming out of the flow team. But they are probably going to get their Uber forced here. Pierre taking a lot of damage over there, and he does pop the Uber. So now we are going to see both teams with that. Ooh, Shade actually got forced pretty hard, too. You see his health really, really low there over on the side bar on the right. But flow giving up some ground here with Leviathan Gaming capturing the middle point after that exchange, and, and you see what happened there. There really weren't a lot of kills exchanged. It was just the players, like, pushing into each other. And because there was always a, at least a one-player advantage for Leviathan, the flow team just backed off. They were like, okay, rather than lose players and lose, like, two points in a row and be backed up to our last, it's better to just retreat, only lose one point, and we're guaranteed to lose it, but at least we can set up a proper defense on the second point. But Sizer coming in from the side immediately takes down Shrugger, and Ruin is now down as well. There's no scouts left to the Flow team. And actually, the Flow's scouts are amazing scouts. Ruin and Shrugger doing really well uh, all season long, like top fragging most of the time, I think. Um, and so Leviathan Gaming has actually lost everybody, which is kind of surprising. But Clockwork coming in, getting a two kill here to clean up the Medic and Soldier combo. Pure and Harblue both down. And he is, he looks like he may want to try and uh, do some deathmatch against three people at once here. He is going to get taken down finally. Ruin and Sugar again coming out and killing him, getting that revenge kill there. So Leviathan Gaming just now respawning. Pure doing that at the same time. It looks like uh, nobody's really captured that second point. So Flo going to sit back on it. Wonderwall actually in a nice little ambush position here in the sewers. We'll see if anybody decides to walk through there. But right now, it's not going to happen. If it is going to be somebody walking through the sewers, it will probably be. Um, a scout. So we might see a scout walking through here, like Clockwork or Sizer. Sizer did that earlier, and he got that nice little ambush on one of the scouts. Uh, we'll see if it happens again. Wonderwall just kind of hanging out here. This is it's pretty standard for a roamer to be watching the flank in some fashion, and that's kind of what he's doing right now. Uh, they really weren't paying that much attention to the flank earlier, which is why Sizer managed to get in when he did. But Wonderwall, aka Ron, Skulk Slayer 420. So this is a thing that happens when ESEA doesn't lock down their servers. People can actually attempt to join the servers, and it kicks them off immediately, like tells them that the current match is full. But they can still get in just and have their name show up in the team chat like it's going now, so we see a lot of that. And it gets pretty hilarious sometimes. People just try to troll the players and troll the STV people watching. Pretty hilarious. And, and we were on a uh, stalemate. CP process. Pretty standard. This is map 3, of course, uh, map 1 and 2 each went to a different team. 
And so if, if I've spoiled something for you there, I apologize. But, uh, I mean, frankly, the videos should be up pretty soon on ESEA's site. If they're not already, we've got people working on that. So uh, it shouldn't take terribly long for that to get fixed. And you can always just go watch the streams all the way through as well. Because, I mean, what do we have, like, nearly 100,000 unique viewers, 300,000 views total? Uh, and it looks like there is finally a push coming in. Soup taking a lot of damage, and Soup is that demo man for Flow. He did not get taken out yet, but there's a lot of multi-Ubering right now going on from Pure. He's mostly trying to keep it on Hard Blue right now, and Hard Blue is doing a bunch of damage to the scout. Not quite taking him out yet, but uh, there you go. They finally kill Banny and Sizer there as well. And that is probably going to give an opportunity for Flow to push onto mid. They just had to kill Clockwork, who was standing on that high ground. Clockwork on high ground is scary. It is just scary. And I, I, t I say that, I don't think I've ever even actually played against Clockwork. But if I had, I would need a change of pants. If he was, like, standing on the high ground and I was a soldier trying to jump into him. I, seriously. Uh, Clockwork practically doesn't miss a shot, especially in a LAN environment. I mean, we were watching him. Uh, I, I was sitting behind him at some points, trying to get some film for, you know, all kinds of stuff. Which I still need to upload, by the way. Mm, Got to do that tonight. Um, but I was sitting behind him for some parts of the LAN, and his aim was just wicked. Like, he, he would rush into three or four people and get at least two kills before he would die. Or sometimes he'd get away with it. Just, like, get two, three kills and be like, yeah, okay, whatever, no big deal. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Sounds like there is an Uber popped right now, and Shade does not have his yet, but he is, I think, wisely backed up. Tyrone, though, goes down. Uh, where is Shade right now? It looks like he has gotten back here, protected by a scout for the moment. But Pure and the rest of his team grabbing a lot of uh, territory here. So they captured mid, they have captured second. Ruin coming in, trying to play off against this scout. I think it's going to be Clockwork again, and he does get taken out there. As Dave kills Wonderwall over on the side, but Flo, the scouts are already in. And what is Tyrone going to do about this? Not a lot. He gets taken out. And so that is going to be 1-0 for Flo here on the third map. CP process. Uh, this map, of course, decides who gets down to the lower bracket and who is going to continue on in the upper bracket of these finals. It is a double elimination tournament, so whoever loses this is not out of it yet. Um, nice jumping by Banny. This guy practices his jumps non-stop, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, I haven't seen him practice, but uh, nice jumping. So he gets there real fast, probably quite a bit faster than Soup, doing a lot of good damage here, but Soup gets the first kill on Clockwork, and that's going to be a big one. Now, Soup is down as well. Um, but with Clockwork down, that's going to be a lot less protection for Banny here on mid. Protecting Banny is an extremely important thing to do if you are Leviathan Gaming. Banny considered probably the best demo in the game. Period. And he's going to start laying down some sticky traps here, just trying to help his team capture that middle point. They do manage to get it. Pure has gotten back to the second point. He is being protected right now by Ruin on the scout. Ruin had a, a fantastic land. His, uh, his kills, his damage output were just phenomenal. So I'm going to watch that for a little while as he does take a lot of, uh, a lot of heals there from the med. Temporarily, anyway. But he deserves it. He was he was defending the guy. And Flo making an interesting push here. They find Dave AC uh, caught out of position, and the entire team practically collapsed on him. They don't want to give too much of an uh, opportunity to Leviathan to maybe get a push around them, though. And they do actually pop Uber. Interesting that uh, they did that, because now there is a little bit of a body block situation going on in here. A nice Uber situation for Leviathan. It is just now fading away. Harblu actually gets taken out, but not before he kills Clockwork. And Sizer is down as well, so no scouts left for, uh, for Leviathan this time around. And losing your scouts as, as either one of these teams, where both teams really rely on those scouts to be some of their best deathmatch players, pretty important. Uh, you do see that Leviathan is losing practically everyone. Shade trying to retreat. Nobody's found him yet, and he does manage to meet up with Clockwork, who, I gotta tell you, Clockwork will probably protect him pretty well. But if you lose Clockwork and Sizer and you're Leviathan Gaming, it's time to back up. Uh, and sometimes you'll see maybe, you know, Dave or, or Tyrone sacrifice themselves so that Shade can get away like they did just then. But uh, Flo, in a really nice position right now, they've got a, just a tiny bit of an uber advantage. And Banny, out of position here, but actually is he? It looks like maybe he was just kind of being the vanguard for this push. No, he definitely did get maybe a little bit too overextended there. Banny down now, so there aren't going to be any more sticky traps to defend this point. It is just going to be up to the heavy. Right now it is six, now five against three. With Sizer on the heavy doing a surprising amount of damage, but Shade did get taken out. There is an invincible soldier jumping in, and there is no Uber to counter this. There really shouldn't be a problem here for Flo to take that point, and they are taking it with their scouts right now. Harblue just finishing off Dave AC, and I gotta tell you, I'll go back to the Dave cam a little bit here. There you go. Because Dave is a solid soldier. Um, and so uh, we, we haven't had the I-46 thing yet to prove it. But everybody pretty much thinks that American soldiers are better than Euro soldiers. Okay, maybe not everybody. 
And maybe there are a few Euro soldiers who, who like, really shine through. I think I've heard some stuff about, like, hats and a couple others. Um, nice, nice sticky positioning. Didn't get detonated on Dave, though, so he is fine. Oh, there you go. He did get detonated. He is going to try and go for an air shot there on, uh, on Soup. Doesn't manage to hit it. He's now jumping in after these scouts and finds Pierce. So he's going to try and deal that damage. Looks like uh, he dealt the damage. Clockwork finished him off, and that's a really great way for a scout to play off a soldier like that. Dave may have called the damage out, and then Clockwork ran in to finish him, but uh, I think Clockwork had his number anyway. So Pierce down, but Shade is down as well. There's going to be no uber advantage really for either team here, and Dave and Clockwork going to start capping the point. Uh, where was I going with that story, though? We, we were talking about soldiers, and uh, I, I got to say that the way people talk up the soldiers in the North American scene, uh, I have heard great things and seen great things from these guys. Dave AC, one of the better ones. Um, Platinum, of course, everybody pretty much considers him probably the best soldier. Um, but a lot of it has to do with not just being, you know, not just DM ability, but also how aggressive they are and how well timed their aggression is. Like the soldiers at this level in invites, especially the top of invites, like these guys are, um, these soldiers really have game sense down to a science. It's just like, I, I know exactly when I need to jump in, and exactly when I need to stay back and guard the flank, and here comes a crit though! Shade down immediately, nice kill by Soup, did not catch that at all, so my apologies, but uh, Dave is jumping in, and he knows, like, this is really their only opportunity to try and prevent the med from getting another huge crit's advantage there. Sizer, the only one left alive, but he did at least manage to take down, or was it him, or was it Clockwork? I don't, I don't know. But the, you know, the combo there, the scouts and the roaming soldier, Dave, we were watching. All that damage going down on Pyrrha, it was too much even for the rest of his team to try and protect him. So, Flo will regain mid here. And they're going to start pushing on two seconds. Still using all the cookie cutter classes, no, uh, no off-classing yet from them. The only off-class I think we've seen is Harblue going to spy. Meanwhile, we have seen Sizer out on the heavies. He's, uh, he does that fairly often on last point of defense. Going heavy. Dealing a lot of damage, just being a giant meat shield. Pretty cool. And we're going to watch the Wonderwall cam for a little while because I forgot to talk this guy up. Wonderwall, consistently an amazing soldier, especially on the roamer roll where he can just dive bomb anywhere he wants. And there he goes. Huge jumps in right now. Does end up getting taken down by Tyrone. And Tyrone, uh, no, he's dead as well. So that is going to be Soup and Shrugger finishing him off after the damage came in from Wonderwall. And that's, that's one thing you'll notice here. Wonderwall doesn't always jump in to get kills. Jumps in to maybe do like one rocket worth of damage and force the enemy team to watch him. You saw that Tyrone and everybody else standing over there was pretty much just staring at Wonderwall as he jumped in. And that gave a lot of uh, opening for the rest of Flo, the scouts especially, to sneak up and take a lot of uh, a lot of ground while they were worried about the jumping soldier. And I mean, if you don't pay attention to the jumping soldier, what's going to happen? You're going to die. So they, they absolutely had to watch Wonderwall, but that just gave him a huge opening to the scouts, and they are trying to finish that off right now. There is a backup attempt going on. Shrugger taking down Banny, but Ruin is gone for the moment, with everybody else on Leviathan Gaming pretty much standing on the last point. Doing a pretty solid job of defense, but they do not have much in the way of an uber advantage. In fact, they're at a disadvantage right now. So if Pure can get his scouts up fast enough, if they can respawn and they can get here and push back in, they should be okay. Actually, the aggression from Leviathan Gaming, though, they hardly even got any kills except for those two scouts, and they are able to come out and start putting a little bit of time on the second point. There is an Uber out of Pure, but I don't think it's going to be ready in time to actually get here and uh, cap the last point. Maybe it will. Shade not building Uber at the maximum rate right now. Uh, and here comes the Uber Shade, only at 60%. No, so it was not ready at all. Leviathan may end up going way down here at the half. Sizer on the heavy, but he's getting focused down right now. He's only got 85 health left. Uh, he actually is alive still. Still up here dealing a lot of damage to that minigun. He does finally get taken down by Soup. And more and more players dying now for our red team. It's going to be Medic versus Medic, but that is going to be halftime. Mihai's flow bringing it up 3-0. to zero. And remember, they do play to 5, so Flo looking really solid here on this third map. So Leviathan Gaming not feeling too happy about that, and Banny um, somehow flubbing that rollout. That's not an easy one to make, but he did not manage to get the, uh, the little bounce there that sometimes you can get on these maps. Still, he's there really fast, dealing a lot of damage to the players coming in through that choke point. And getting up on the high ground, he's got to be careful about the soldiers jumping in, because soldiers, I mean, they have a field day on that high ground. It's so easy for them to jump up there and get a lot of damage done. Banny trying his best to defend Shade, but Shade does go down. Flo sort of winning this mid-fight so far, but Sizer's got a lot of health left, and his fellow scout even more. Clockwork at 101 right now. Soup, it's going to be him against two scouts, and i got to tell you, no, sir. One demo against two scouts? Even if one of those scouts has, like, eight health, that is just not going to happen at this level. 
<laughs> skulk track. Don't even know what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a skulking scout. I don't I don't know this particular meme yet. Maybe I gotta ask these guys, because uh probably something I should know. And Leviathan Gaming are off to a decent start this half. It is still three to zero though. So they're gonna need five points. Well they're gonna need four at least to win this. Um Five to put it away outright. Four, because there's 30 minutes per half. So if they get four points, their opponents don't get any, and they just run the timeout, then that would actually win it for them as well. But that's a really tall order here. Especially because process, the last point on CP process, it's a tough one to push. And apparently White has joined the game. So that's cute. I don't... I don't think that's very funny, though. He probably could have done a little bit of a better job, but you know, maybe he was just looking for his five seconds of fame. Here comes another Kritzkrieg. Oh, countered perfectly by an Uber, though. Leviathan Gaming going to push right in. Beautiful air pipe there from Banny. They're going to try and take down this last soldier and scout. And they should be able to do that. There you go, Tyrone killing Harblue. Oh, Wonderwall is behind enemy lines, though. He's going to go straight in for Shade. Can he get him? No! No, he cannot. And I realize I'm being super loud right now. My apologies. Shade down to about 60 health. So that equalizer, well, I think it's the escape plan now. So this land, here's the hilarious thing, guys. This land was played like two days after the update that split the equalizer. So, and it also did a couple other things, like, you know, change the quick fix so that medics could um, be drawn along with their players when they were doing the, uh, the you know, explosive jumps, like sticky bomb and rocket jumps. Um, so there, there's some, just some changes. Definitely some changes. The big one is the equalizer, though, that really affected comp play. So everybody's using the escape plan now, which means they don't get the damage boost, but they still get the same speed boost as they normally do, you know, for the health. Um, Banny doing some nice damage right now. He does take down Ruin, who tried to get back into that fight, but I mean, he was either going to be locked out or he was going to die, and he chose death there. Now the rest of Flo is thinking about retreating. Wonderwall does get taken down, uh, but I think Pure has gotten away at the moment. Dave was trying to go in for maybe a flank, and uh, he did get taken down by Shrugger. You see that in the kill feed. Probably don't need to read that to you. But Flo are now going to be defending this choke point. It's just they're not doing a lot of spam, so they actually give the entrance in mostly for free to Leviathan, and they do take down Soup right away. I think he was trying his best to stop that, but... Pff, okay. Uh, there goes the Uber right now. Looks like... I, wait, why did Shade pop that? I actually don't know, because I don't see anybody bombing in there. Huh. Okay, well, no idea why he popped it. Maybe he just didn't want to make it too easy on flow. But Banny jumps in and takes down Pure right away. Ruin on the heavy. He's doing a pretty good job of defending, but he's the only one left. He's taking so much spam right now, he does get taken down. So everybody's wiped out, and wow, game is getting tightened up here. Tightened like a screw. Like a screw-on cap a soda bottle. Is that a good analogy? You know, there's, we're slowly tightening the game up right now until it won't get tightened anymore. And then maybe sometimes you tighten it too hard and the threads, like, actually go under and then it's not as tight. And All right, well, we're, we're done with uh, trying to overextend that analogy. We'll see which player decides to overextend at this mid-fight first. Harblue getting taken down. And that was Tyrone jumping in, finishing off Wonderwall as well, so no Shrugger, I'm sorry, no Soldiers left. Shrugger actually did get taken down as well, so no Shrugger left either. Flo wiping out there, and Shade is still alive. You do see uh, Dave using that escape plan right now. Hang on. There you go. Yeah, move speed increases as the user becomes injured. It says blocks healing while in use, but actually, so here's the thing. It doesn't block you from calling for medic when you have the uh, escape plan out, which is a bit of a change as well. It's not a huge change for comp, because when a soldier is hurt, he's just going to call, like, over his mumble. Or, like, if he's sitting right next to the medic, which in many cases they are, he's just going to be like, hey, I'm hurt, I'm over here, heal me. The medic's going to be like, yeah, sure thing, boss. Um... But yeah, it's kind of weird that you can actually still call for Medic with it out now. The Uber does come in and really not doing a lot of damage. They do take down Shrugger, though. Shrugger was on the heavy, and that is going to be an important pick. Now Wonderwall down as well. There's just not a lot of players left here to really deal the damage. Clockwork and Banny getting taken out. That's going to be good for Flo on defense here. And Ruin doing a really sweet job of defense. Is he going to be able to stop this, though? No. He's the only player left alive for his team. He did get knocked down. Uh, knocked off the point, really. He was not able to stay on there. He would have just eaten Crow. So, uh... It is now tied. It is as tight as it's going to possibly get, unless we get up to a 4-4 situation, which we always love here on Cell TV. And Vanny looks like he did do a, a much better job of that particular rollout, getting there super fast. It's laying down sticky traps over here on this uh, 
doorway. If somebody tries to come after him there, he will be nice and protected, but he does decide he's just going to start laying down the sticky spam. Meanwhile, jumping soldiers all over the place. Let's try and get an idea of what's going on at this uh, mid-fight here. As blue team sort of backed up behind a lot of cover, but they are actually starting to be a bit of aggressive here, and flow once again in the red. Backing away through their choke, they lost Ruin, they lost Wonderwall, they decided they just didn't like their positioning and they didn't like their health. So the call was made to back off. That's going to give mid to Leviathan once again. Tyrone jumping through here with a scout. And they are once again, they're kind of given this ground for free. Pure had an uber and uh, decided the rest of his team just wasn't in the right position to defend this. So they, they just gave up the second point while they had an uber. No, no, okay, here they come. So they did sort of, hmm, that's an interesting call. I think I understand what's going on here, is that they kind of made like they were going to retreat and tried not to even show like they were defending so that their opponents would overextend and then they would come in and try to, to re-uber and stop the capture and get the kills, which they did kill Shade, but now they have lost almost everybody. Ruin, the only one left, he does get the kill on Banny. Nice kill. Um, problem is, Leviathan Gaming with four players live right now, uh, the respawn timer on... Oh, nice kill by Wonderwall. Taking down Sizer with ease. So the respawn timer on the flow team, not looking too great, but there you go, they do finally get up there, and there's not enough Leviathan players left to get the heals. By the way, I don't think I've ever actually seen, and may maybe there have been a few, but I don't think I've ever actually seen a sponsor, like, send a rep to the ESEA land for TF2 until this season when the Leviathan Gaming rep came. Uh, and he was a great guy, he let us use his camera to get a lot of footage, not just of the Leviathan team, but of everybody, so it was pretty awesome to see, uh, his name is Gatsby. He is an awesome dude. I cannot say good enough things about Leviathan Gaming sponsorship. Um, just awesome. So, Leviathan now bringing it up to 4-3. to three. It is 4-3. Very fast rounds here on Process, which I gotta say does not happen all that often. Process, usually a pretty stalemate map because this last point is tough to push. But uh, we're gonna watch this Banny rollout. It is impeccable as ever. And he is feeling pretty good right now because they have just come back against Flo from a 3-0 position to be 4-3. They're up right now. They only have to win one more round here, so can Flo defend their honor and stay as the one seed because they are the number one seed. Remember, Leviathan Gaming in this land was number four seed. So they were the last team to qualify for land. Dave taking some damage here. Yeah, he's doing damage of his own, but he gets caught up against the wall. Not a lot that you can really do in that situation except just die. You're going to die gracefully in that situation. Wonderwall chasing down Shade. Shade doing some decent damage to uh, to our soldier friend here using that escape plan. But he will uh, start capping, and so I think Flo is probably going to be able to set this up to another tie game here at 4-4. Four four. They've got a nice super advantage. But they are going to be pushing against Clockwork on the Sniper and Sizer on the Heavy. So a lot of off-classing going on right now. We could watch the Sizer cam maybe, but he's pretty much just going to be standing here as a Heavy. Not the most interesting thing all the time. Um, Clockwork, on the other hand, it's going to be a slow, patient game that we play, but Clockwork has wicked, nasty aim. So if he can get the headshots, he can turn this around. Banny actually saying, I'll turn it around for you. Don't worry about that. Harblue eating a rock, or uh, eating a pipe right away, and Clockwork decides to just switch back off to Scout. Pure getting taken down. Wonderwall taken down. Now Flo is killing Banny. That's going to be important because there's no stickies on the point. Uh, they've got a bunch of players here. Shrugger does take down... Tyrone right up against the wall, but actually it's only hard blue left and he just respawns, so he's all the way back at second point. That's a wipeout on the attack for Flo, and hard blue just trying to lay down some spam rockets to take out this scout, but not able to hit him up here on the, uh, it's, it's totally still a Cyclops puppy. That's pretty much all it is. So, now of course hard blue is going to connect up with his med, we're to make sure they build that uber for a little while. And we're back to a situation where Flo holds mid. Leviathan Gaming holds second. And Leviathan thinking about making a, uh, a, what do you call this, map room push? I think they're going to do it. They've got the Uber ready to go. Oh, Banny eats a sticky trap from Soup, though. And that's going to turn that off right away. Dave down as well. Tyrone trying to get away from the scout, but he's not able to do it. That's three picks for the flow team. Shade does still have the Uber, but he's going to have to think about popping that pretty quickly. Clockwork on a two-kill streak right now with Ruin and Wonderwall both down. But, okay, so Clockwork is grabbing med heals, and he's coming in up against Harblue. Harblue takes the Uber, finishes him off, and now Pure is in a fantastic position with... Yeah, the rest of his team here pushing on to the point. They are going to recapture second. They're going to have another opportunity to go in and capture last and tie this game up. 
with Leviathan Gaming once again back up to their last point. They're gonna have Clockwork respawning pretty soon. And there is no Uber, so I eh, flow if they had the slightest opportunity to try and push in, they no longer have that chance. Uh, they're gonna have to wait until the Uber's ready, they're gonna try to make an even Uber push. Uh, at this point they might want to try and suicide like Ruin or Shrugger. And apparently they're telling Shrugger to build right now. Shrugger, build! Oh no, it's actually Ruin. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, there's apparently there's a story about how uh, since Shrugger was relatively new to invite this season, uh, might be one of the newest players on the team, or no, newest players in invite, he was actually taking a lot of direction from the rest of the team and, and doing a fantastic job with it. Uh, but we will see... How this attack goes right now, the Invincible Heavy is telling the story here, as the rest of the Leviathan Gaming team is pretty much cleaning up the kills. Hard Blue was thinking about going for a back gap, but he got spotted out there. That is not going to happen at all. Sneaky attempt, but the execution required the rest of the team not to realize he was there, and Leviathan, they knew. They knew. So they do grab that second point once again, and a complete wipeout for Flow means that actually Leviathan is going to push forward with a heavy to cap mid. Tyrone making a nice little jump here onto the high ground. Doing some spam, and Sizer, pretty much just using his uh, his gigantic Hoover vacuum cleaner here to uh, to vacuum up all those stickies on the point. Not the world's best camera angle there, Valve. Come on, come on. Yeah, Leviathan's gonna have a nice Uber advantage here that Shade will want to use fairly quickly. They're gonna probably have to pop it fairly sh soon through this choke point so they don't take too much damage. Where are they actually? Oh no, I think they're coming in through maybe this side. Yes, they are. And they have not had to pop the Uber yet. They gotta be careful. Shade didn't want to take too much damage, but he doesn't. He's nice and protected in this hallway for the moment. And they take down Wonderwall and Ruin. Actually, Flo is starting to fall apart a little bit here. They've got 100% Uber now. They could try and defend it. Oh, this is weird though. They're not gonna be able to defend the point. They did force the pop, so that kind of resets things. But actually, an Invincible Heavy still walking in here, and he's going to have 450 health out of this Uber. Peer is in trouble. He's at 27 health right now, and the enemy team is going to know it. They know he is hurt. Uh, Scout thinking about going in after him, but Clockwork actually gets taken down, so Peer will uh, be continuing his medic regen there, getting to a position where he's not feeling as threatened. And his team manages to hold on to the last point. This is getting really exciting right now because actually the Leviathan Gaming could put this game away. It is 4-3 at the moment. They could turn it into a 5-3 to three victory, which would put them into the upper bracket. A uh, big jump in here by Wonderwall, but he's probably going to get taken down. Shrugger actually down first. And now Wonderwall gets taken out by Clockwork. Um, where is the Clockwork cam? He's actually a little bit far back behind his team right now. Going to take an overheal, though. Going with about 140 health through here. It's not a bad number to have. And the Uber's ready for Shade. Pure gonna have his just about now. Um, Clockwork is gonna start trying his aim out on a heavy. Not too hard to hit those guys, but he's actually getting focused really hard here by both Soup and the heavy. That heavy, of course, being Ruin. So a good focus there, but the Uber actually was not popped for Shade until the Uber was almost over for Pure, and that is gonna tell the story right now. It is just hardly left alive to try and defend this, and he's, is he gonna get it? No! That is actually a win. For Leviathan Gaming, GG called by Clockwork there first, and I'm sure everybody else called it too. Let's just find out. Everybody says GG. Being good mannered here in esports. And of course, these guys were actually sitting back to back. That is how the TF2 uh, computers were set up at this land, but that means, of course, that Leviathan Gaming moved on to the upper bracket finals. Not the finals, uh, they, had to, they had to play one more match in the upper bracket. Sorry. But they did move on to the upper bracket where Mihai's Flow, everybody's favorite team this season, actually moved down to the lower bracket. Uh, I'm probably not going to cast any more of the games from ESEA land because, of course, you can find those on the XTV. But uh, I do want you guys to stay tuned to this channel because I'm going to have more awesome stuff coming at you. Um, I was really hoping I could cast a couple more games from this particular series because one of them would have been hilarious to do in Pyrovision, but Pyrovision doesn't really work very well for custom maps. So, eh, all right. Do what you can do. Anyway, an excellent game here with Leviathan Gaming taking five points in the second half. I do hope you hit subscribe, and thank you to everybody who already has. You rock. You're the greatest people. And especially to everybody who takes the time, just the tiny little bit of effort. That's all it takes to press that like button, because the people who have pressed the like button on my videos, you make me feel happy inside. You also help my search results in YouTube. Uh, at this point, when you go to like competitive TF2 videos on YouTube, I tend to be in the related videos section quite a bit, which is awesome. And that is pretty much because of you guys. So thanks.
and I'm signing out.